Hello again, everyone, and uh, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, the subject of our webinar today is Cisco MediaNet, MediaNet Services Interface, or MSI. And we're um, happy to have uh, someone from Cisco here as our presenter today, Basant Maramuta. So we will now begin our webinar. So thank you, Basant, for joining us here today. Thanks, Ray. So just before we start, just want to give a little uh, um, information about this webinar. It is a live webinar. Um, it's totally interactive. So um, if any of you have any questions, to the right you will see a panel where you can ask your questions. We have a, a, um, a crowd of uh, subject matter experts here to answer your questions. So by all means, please feel free to answer your questions. Um, it also, uh, this webinar also has some polling questions, so there's a survey that's going to be done. So uh, when uh, Mr. Madhubuja does have those polling questions, you can interact and um, check off and answer the questions as they, they come up. Also, at the end of the webinar, a survey will pop up, so we kindly ask if you could please uh, complete those surveys and send them to us. It's really helpful. Let us know how you enjoyed the, uh, the webinar, if it was helpful. Um, that would be uh, that would be great. So um, next slide, please. Huh? So again, uh, Basan Madamuja here is a product manager with uh, with Cisco, and thank you again for joining us. Uh, Mr. Madamuja focuses on the media services interface or MSI self development kit within MediaNet architecture and leads the Cisco developer program for MSI management. Before joining Cisco in 2011, um, Basant led several consulting IT and strategy engagements for clients in the high-tech and financial services sector. And he holds a degree in computer science and engineering, as well as an MBA from Berkeley High. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Basant. So thanks, Basant. Thanks, Ray. Uh, glad to be here. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Uh, Today I want to take you through uh, how you can use MediaNet Media Services Interface Software Development Kit to enable business video. I'm a product manager with the MediaNet team. Uh, glad to be here. So when we started looking at business video in general, we started categorize, categorizing them into seven broad categories. And what we found out was that most businesses start with the uh, use case in the center, uh, the meetings use case. So they start using video more for meetings and collaboration. And soon they discover that they can achieve significant business benefits by extending their use of video from just meetings to some of the other use cases, such as training and education, executive communications, advertisements, uh, events, customer support and interaction, as well as safety and security. These use cases often help transform core business processes to improve competitive differentiation, make a radical change in cost structure, accelerate time to market, and improve customer satisfaction. This is where video starts becoming a lot more than just travel cost savings. So how do you take these use cases and how do you apply them to your businesses? And how can MediaNet help you do that in a smooth and scalable fashion so that you can uh, realize many of the cost benefits that we'll be talking about? We'll look into that more in our presentation. But first, let's start understanding how video is a fundamentally different type of application than, say, for example, voice. So this slide here illustrates some of the key differences between voice and video as, as, at a base application level. Providing good quality experience for users can quickly become complex and expensive if you consider the fact that organizations quite often deploy different collaboration applications and endpoints from a variety of vendors at the same time on, the, on top of the same infrastructure. As you can see from the chart, the uh, characteristics of voice are fairly linear. It's uh, usually very consistent, well-behaved, it's not usually compressed, whereas video is just a different kind of application. They have different video applications, have different types of bandwidth requirements, traffic becomes bursty, unpredictable, and highly compressed and often available in a variety of form factors from uh, a variety of vendors. This inconsistency on application characteristics increases complexity for CIOs and IT admins when they start deploying and managing, managing video applications. 
And these challenges become multifold, especially when you consider the fact that budgets are always shrinking and uh, end user quality expectations uh, are always increasing because video is pervasive in their lives outside of the office. So let's look at some of the key challenges that uh, businesses typically face in scaling video. In the case of mass deployed endpoints, there is a need for highly skilled personnel. Uh, and when I when I say mass deployed endpoints, I, I mean the, I mean the likes of physical surveillance cameras, digital signage that you know that that extend into the hundreds and thousands uh, across uh, an enterprise. Ongoing support of video endpoints is always a challenge, and uh, troubleshooting involves high expenditure. Most of the time, it's just hard to even pinpoint where the problem is. Throwing bandwidth at it, we found, uh, is not usually sufficient, and uh, these upgrades are also not uh, uh, not inexpensive. So fundamentally, there is an inability to assess video impact on the network and verify and validate service level ag agreements. And here's where MediaNet can help. MediaNet is Cisco's architecture-based uh, approach to help enterprises deal with these challenges. It can help in simplifying deployments, lower risks associated with, with these deployments, thereby cut costs, as well as improve the overall quality of these uh, video and collaboration deployments. But first, let's take a quick look at uh, a, a definition of what a MediaNet is. It is an end-to-end -end IP architecture that enables pervasive and immersive rich media experiences. And what do I mean by this? Media net capabilities such as the MSI, which we'll talk about more in this presentation, embedded into video applications and endpoints, make them smarter when they interact with the network. Similarly, there are a variety of media net capabilities on Cisco's routers and switches bundled into network operating systems that makes the network smarter as a whole in its ability to identify and differentiate these different classes of applications. The end result being that smarter endpoints and uh, smarter networks work seamlessly together in optimally sharing uh, media and network resources as well as in interacting with cloud-based services. We found that our customers are rapidly adopting uh, a variety of rich media applications, including telepresence, web conferencing, and surveillance. So MediaNet Capabilities that can help ease some of the pains we talked about can be broadly classified into three different categories. The first set of uh, character, uh, capabilities or features come under the suite of media automation, and these are squarely aimed at simplifying and scaling with, uh, deployment. A second set of features uh, under the umbrella of media of monitoring help administrators manage these large-scale deployments. And then thirdly, there is the media awareness suite of capabilities, which enhances the level of awareness of, of the network, uh, of the different types of flows that travels in the network as well as of the applications, and brings it all together. Now, the media services interface sits squarely between the applications and endpoints and the network and helps endpoints leverage all these capabilities under a shared fabric of uh, a secure environment with intelligent management capabilities. The MSI uh, is basically a software development kit that resides on applications and endpoints and enables tighter integration between the applications and network. It, uh, as we pointed out, it, it enables the network to become more media aware and makes rich media applications become more network aware, enabling them to dynamically adapt to changing network conditions and improve the range of troubleshooting options through tighter integration. One of the critical objectives or aspects of the media of a media net is, is this tighter integration it provides between uh, shared network infrastructure services and rich media endpoints. Media net uh, capabilities can be used to enhance quality of experience with the application, reduce operating costs, reduce uh, operating costs for managing and deploying these applications. But what we found that found found out was in most enterprises this crucial linkage between uh, a, between a network and the applications is missing or just incomplete. The end result being that uh, businesses have failed to leverage the full extent of the intelligence that resides in the network, you know, driving up the total cost of ownership for uh, 
large scale video deployment. The MSI therefore is a very critical component of the media net architecture because it enables applications to take advantage of all these network services in a very seamless, consistent fashion. The MSI supports a variety of protocols and host stacks as this slide illustrates here. And uh, it was developed to specifically address the challenge of tightly integrating applications and network uh, with, a, and with, with an objective of minimizing TCO. The APIs that the MSI provide, uh, provides uh, enable applications to have a consistent interaction with the different uh, media net features. There is there are a set of manageability APIs that network management stations can use, and as we'll we'll walk through several of these specific use cases. Uh, but it 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 fundamentally enhances the awareness uh, between uh, of, of applications to be able to leverage network services. What this helps drive then subsequently is that uh, it accelerates adoption of a media net, and you know accelerates uh, enhances the ability of businesses to. Uh, gain the full leverage from their infrastructure investments. Essentially, the MSI becomes the glue between intelligent network services and increasingly sophisticated uh, media applications. Bridging this gap exponentially increases value to both the application side as well as the network side. A quick look at some of the Cisco endpoints and products that have the MSI today are uh, physical surveillance uh, line of products several different models of IP cameras were one of the, one of the first uh, endpoints to adopt the MSI, closely followed by our WebEx conferencing system. Uh, the Jabber for Windows platform has been shipping with the metadata capabilities, uh, uh, part of the media awareness that I spoke to, spoke about a little bit earlier uh, for about 12 months now, with the Jabber for Mac uh, platform planning on picking these cap capabilities up soon. Recently, just about a few weeks ago, personal telepresence and telepresence, immersive telepresence products uh, also started shipping with the MSI, and they have the full suite of media monitoring and media awareness uh, capabilities. Uh, you know that that help ease uh, operational costs. So we'll take a quick pause here, and uh, I've modeled a set of questions that I'm interested in your responses for. Uh, as I've modeled these after a, after a survey that our Internet Business Solutions Group did, so very curious to find out how our uh, audience mixes here. So give you a moment to answer, to think about and answer these questions. You may need to go out of full screen mode and go into the poll uh, portion of the WebEx application to answer. We'll look at some of the, some of the uh, capabilities that the MSI provides in more depth now, um, and, you know, that will help you kind of get a better understanding of, uh, of, of how MSI and MediaNet help drive costs down. Auto configuration essentially is around uh, the ability of Cisco switches to recognize which media endpoints plug into them and be able to do smart things just based on that one plug, uh, you know, the, the one, uh, you know, deployment action. So, the objective is to enable a truly plug-and-play experience for hard endpoints. Some of the key benefits are that it reduces time and cost involved in deployment, and pro you, you can an administrator can also provide a granular mapping between the types of endpoints and the network settings, such as quality of service, security, and location. A more graphical representation in IP surveillance context, where the MSI. Uh, was able to reduce deployment times from, on average from about 45 minutes to uh, 90 seconds in large-scale deployment, which if you think about it, it's, it becomes, it translates into significant dollar savings in large-scale deployment. So what happens is a camera that's integrated with the MSI, as soon as it's plugged into an access switch, sends a CVP packet identifying itself. And the switch uh, takes in this packet and, and applies the right QoS settings as well as up, uh, assigns it to the right VLAN. Uh, macro triggers on the switch that does these functions. This specific feature is called Auto Smart Board. There is also location awareness that the MSI brings to the picture, wherein uh, an endpoint is able to locate, is, is able to understand where it is located from the switch configuration. And uh, this eliminates a you know, variety of manual errors and 
coordination between personnel of different skill sets because this the the, in, the location awareness is now built into the endpoint and a management service or an application controller can quickly leverage this information uh, very easily so it's 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 very significant when you talk when you think about you know how this might have involved a, you know a manual uh, a manual labor for someone to go up and actually hook the camera up and you know if there was uh, if there were errors or something else that was recognized, it was a very timely, uh, it was a very uh, time-intensive uh, effort to correct it. And MSI significantly just, uh, you know, reduces all that, reduces the risk of error, and enables the uh, video deployment to be at scale. One of the other uh, key capabilities within the auto configuration suite that the MSI brings to uh, bear is the ability for endpoints, both hard and soft endpoints, to uh, discover dynamically the management uh, application, management service, or an application controller that they need to go register with. And this is enabled by something uh, we call the uh, Service Discovery API, wherein as soon as the MSI boots up, it looks up either a DH DHCP or a DNS uh, service record and looks for specific service strings. So in the case of, for example, uh, the Jabber for Windows client, it could uh, look up a network ma application management service. In the case of physical surveillance camera, it could uh, be programmed to look at uh, a video surveillance manager. And so where this involved uh, an operator discovering and manually adding these endpoints by hand, this is all automated and, and kind of rounds out the auto configuration uh, suite of, of the MSI. So end benefit is significant simplification in inventory management. The next key set of capabilities that I want to talk about is called media monitoring, right? And media monitoring is, is the broad umbrella suite that comprises of performance monitoring as well as media trace. Uh, performance monitoring is the ability for any media net or MSI enabled element in the end-to-end -end, uh, video deployment to become a probe on its own. And media trace is a dynamic troubleshooting tra technique. Most of, in, in most uh, cases today, there is, there is a significant challenge in just identifying which part of the network or which part of uh, a large domain or uh, a video deployment has a problem. And this, uh, these capabilities are very key in eliminating, that, eliminating the mean time to resolution. So the performance monitoring uh, in particular provides per flow uh, Per hop performance monitoring and media trace both provide per flow per hop visibility into flow metrics such as loss, jitter, and delay for uh, any type of audio or video stream. Another capability that media monitoring comprises of is called IPSLABO. Uh, it's, it's the ability for an ad, it's, it's in essence synthetic traffic generation. So uh, ahead of a major event or a live uh, you know, executive communication. Administrators today, without uh, IPSLAVO, have no idea whether their network can scale. So IPSLAVO helps an administrator to be able to really understand. And, you know, it basically eliminates the guesswork out of whether how well the event will go by providing the ability for uh, end endpoints and network elements to provide to generate synthetic traffic that mimics the same real type real traffic. So again, media monitoring is, is the set of capabilities that help an administrator take uh, that helps an administrator operationally manage the net video deployment after they've used auto configuration to deploy the uh, video endpoint. So want to walk you, walk you through this specific use case where imagine there are uh, there is a legacy network in place or there are no media net enabled network elements. With just the MSI on the endpoint, uh, an intelligent network management station that talks to the MSI can collect quality of experience metrics from the endpoints to quickly identify where the problem actually is. And then using that information, 
an administrator or a CIO can then strategically enable key points in their infrastructure with performance monitoring or media trace to, to further gain uh, troubleshooting prowess. Right, so this helps one get in front of the problem, uh, really eliminate the dust work and finger pointing that goes on in many IT organizations uh, by providing them a very clear database uh, report on where the problem is. So a key requirement for this is for management stations to be able to uh, use the risk-based API that the MSI provides. We also call this the eastbound API to be able to talk to endpoints. And uh, in the next couple of slides, I want to quickly take you through uh, a sample of how a media trace looks for, from a NMS that is able to talk the language of MSI. So these are some screenshots from live action. Uh, you can see how it provides a very visual view of the end-to-end -end path that traffic takes, uh, for example, in a person's telepresence call. One can then spe specifically select the flow that they suspect is, uh, is, is having a problem and kick off a media trace, which then comes back to them with an identification of which specific point uh, in their end-to-end end -end flow has the actual problem. So you, you can see how in this case you, an administrator can get in front of you know, what the performance is and what the metrics are on a hop by hop basis from an endpoint to the endpoint to the other side. A more in-depth view in terms of the kind of metrics that you can look at. Um, I want to take another path here and uh, help you think through this question. Again you need to probably ex exit your full screen mode to answer this question give you a moment there. Again, the intent is I'm curious to find out how our audience today, uh, you know, how well these responses correlate with some of these surveys that our internet business solutions created in the recent past. The next set of capabilities that I'd like to present to you today is, is around media awareness, right? It's the ability for the network to be able to differentiate applications. So as one deploys with many types of video applications on the network, uh, it's understandable that an, uh, a CIO would be nervous about the bandwidth uh, that they will need to bring into the table or the bandwidth drought that it will cause if a user starts using video in a large scale. Because me, so metadata is the capability of the MSI to signal to the network specific application specific attributes and flow specific attributes. Uh, and this can help, uh, help the network in identifying the different types of applications. So uh, an administrator can make uh, decisions to protect business critical applications like CRM or bank transactions versus over the top, uh, you know, other versus other applications. So metadata and media media net together is very capable of extracting uh, very specific detail level information to traffic running on the network and can help an admin prioritize these uh, applications that matter the most. So it eliminates the need for an administrator to just have to throw extra bandwidth at the problem uh, and, and thereby, you know, brings in significant, uh, we've, we've noticed we have some data points that it can save them up to 25% in operational expenditures if, if they use this capability wisely. So I'll we'll take you through three specific use cases here. Uh, first, imagine Jabber on any device today with the BYOD trend accelerating. Uh, your employees can dial into uh, video conferencing calls from uh, their own mobile devices, right? So what the slide specifically illustrates is that there is an ability to differentiate traffic based on the type of device it originates from, right? So in this example here, there is MSI embedded into a desktop platform and not in a mobile platform today. And therefore, an administrator can uh, can make a make a policy that says, "Well, I know that this is Jabber traffic originating from an IT provider device. Thereby, I'm going to uh, treat it preferential preferentially versus traffic that's coming from a BYOD type of device, and I'll put it on this path." So it's, it's the MSI will be on mobile platforms, so there will be an increasing ability for administrators to be able to identify the type of devices uh, flow, flow is originating from. But, you know, right at the back, 
that that ability to be able to differentiate based on originating device is, is very valuable. A similar extension uh, in the case of uh, WebEx traffic, let's say uh, one of the one of, one of the things that we've come across widely is that wide scale adoption of WebEx video is basically hindered by uh, by the fear of impacting other business critical traffic. So uh, with the MSI, uh, when it boots up, integrated with the MSI integrated with WebEx, WebEx announces itself, and uh, an administrator can have a granular QoS policy that uh, helps them differentiate between, say, voice and data tra traffic from WebEx versus video traffic from WebEx. Right? They could say, well, voice and data is very important to the collaboration experience, so uh, I'm going to put that with in a, in a prioritized queue versus video traffic which I'll just treat as best of us now. So within the same application, same device, uh, you could differentiate, you could use metadata and MSI, MSI metadata to be able to differentiate different types of flows. A, a very important third use case is really around maximizing network resources. Right, so there are we all know bandwidth is very expensive, so is there a way that we can minimize the need to upgrade, right? And one thing that we've come across also is that uh, a lot of enterprises have backup links that they almost under never use or are currently underutilized. So uh, in this uh, scenario, one can say, well, I've got voice traffic coming in, and I know it is voice traffic uh, from a hard endpoint, so I'm going to send it through my primary link whereas I've got some soft client video traffic coming in and I'll use my backup links to, uh, to route them. Right. So, so the applications of metadata as a concept are practically limitless. Uh, it's, we've, we've just started with a key set of elements and attributes that uh, help operationalize all these three use cases right at the bat and we are looking to add more of those attributes in, in future releases of the MSI. We want to take another pass here and uh, uh, present you with the last poll question here. Um, have you ever commented, record, recommended, or uh, forwarded business videos? Again, this is modeled on the IP, IBSG survey that uh, was done recently. I'm curious to find out your responses. Give you a moment there. Can you, may, you may need to exit your uh, full screen uh, to answer this question. The other use case that I would like to present before you today is the is this is how an NMS can intelligently leverage MSI benefits. So this packs all of what we were talking about so far together. Um, with an MSI on, imagine a Jabber uh, soft client on, on a Mac OS uh, in session with another uh, Jabber client, when, when it first boots up, there is an automatic discovery and registry registration that the MSI uh, facilitates, which helps a network management or an application management service to be able to build a dynamic auto-updating inventory. So regardless of where these clients move, uh, there is always a re-registration -regist re that is tr triggered when, for example, if they move from a wireless to a wired interface. So it helps, keep, it helps a network management station keep a very accurate inventory of all MSI-enabled and so imagine there is a Jabber session, and uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, participants in the session has a poor quality. And with MSI-based performance monitoring turned on, and with thresholding uh, that's set by Jabber, the MSI detects the degradation in, say, packet loss, and sends a notification to the management station, which can then auto-initiate a media trace, a reverse media trace from that endpoint. When the media trace is complete, the MSI then sends the compiled media trace report to a management station, which helps uh, an administrator sitting in front of the management station to quickly pinpoint where the issue was. And so this, in contrast with uh, post-session, you know, uh, troubleshooting mechanisms, is, is a very is a very significant improvement. It helps an administrator get real-time uh, records of sessions and performance metrics 
what, and, and helps them get a get a view of what was uh, what was in place as the session progresses, rather than having uh, to rely on archived logs. So the the obvious benefits here are that you know with MSI and MediaNet uh, enabled uh, and enabled architecture. Customers are looking at a complete product, complete solution, rather than point products and uh, needing to tie them all together. So, with just the MSI on uh, endpoints, with MSI enabled Cisco products and applications, uh, that is, uh, businesses and customers can start using or seeing a lot of these benefits right off the bat without needing to forklift, forklift upgrade their infrastructure. So just to summarize, the, just the last use case benefits for an, benefits from supporting the management interface of MSI is just that it's a leverage once or, or support once leverage many times type of application because it is the same consistent MSI REST interface that's available on different classes of endpoints, the same type of API calls. So there is no need to reinvent the wheel or custom implement solutions with different types of applications as they evolve. So definitely, the ability, it enhances the ability to leverage MediaNet to proactively monitor traffic, uh, accelerate troubleshooting, and increase one's visibility of the types of traffic and applications that travels in one's network uh, based on the richer reporting that metadata uh, enables. So just a quick note here, that's, um, that, that's a summary of all the key MSI-enabled use cases. Uh, many of the products and uh, Capabilities. Some of the products and capabilities that I was talking about are in different di different stages of development. So uh, definitely look at our data sheet that you can get to from cisco.com slash go slash media uh, for the most up to date uh, report on what endpoints and applications and infrastructure are shipping with what specific capabilities. But here is a quick uh, look for you on uh, uh, some of the uh, products and uh, on on both the network side as well as on the application endpoint side and the type of uh, capabilities that they support. Again, there is a reference here in this uh, slide to uh, our data sheet, uh, which definitely is the most accurate and official version of what is shipping. And that's, uh, that's pretty much the presentation that I wanted to bring in front of you today. Wanted to leave you also with several additional resources that you can go to. Obviously, the best place to start to learn more about MediaNet and MSI is our website at uh, cisco.com slash go slash MediaNet. There are specific sub pages within uh, our cisco.com website for auto configuration, media monitoring, media awareness. Uh, there are several VODs that you can go through to kind of get yourself familiar, more familiar with these uh, capabilities. The knowledge base, knowledge base is another great resource which has which hosts a variety of uh, deployment guides and configuration examples. And finally, there is also the support forum. Uh, if you have questions, uh, definitely engage there. We have a highly active support community uh, looking into all your questions. Uh, definitely follow our blogs where we uh, frequently make product announcements and you know. Uh, kind of share with you some of the conversations that we are having in terms of where we take MediaNet next. Uh, for any anyone that's interested in how they can work with the MSI or, uh, or, or start supporting MediaNet, from a management standpoint, there is a Cisco Developer Network program, uh, the URL for which is here. Uh, you can definitely learn more about the MSI management as well as the MediaNet management program there. With that, I'll uh, wrap it up. Uh, thanks for your time. Thank you for attending the presentation. We have uh, several minutes now to kind of answer any questions that you may have. Sasan, thanks very much. Uh, we really appreciate the time that you've given us here today. Um, there's a lot of information, I know. So I just want to let the audience know that there will be the recording as well as a, a copy of the presentation available. So we will be um, letting you folks know via an email when that is posted. Also want to remind you that the survey is going to be popping up at the end of this uh, this broadcast, and if you can kindly complete those and let us know uh, your thoughts, share your thoughts, we greatly appreciate that. And uh, we do have some questions here. 
Hassan. So uh, maybe we'll let's go for the first one here. Can third-party applications use the MSI? Absolutely. So uh, we have started engaging with strategic partners in several different verticals uh, where they're interested in uh, leveraging uh, MSI and in tightly integrating with, with the MSI. So as of now, uh, all the products that are on the market are primarily Cisco endpoints and applications, but we recognize how uh, other uh, vendors and other applications can start using uh, or leveraging benefits from media net by integrating the, with the MSI. So uh, if, if uh, any of your customers or any businesses are interested, definitely get back in touch with us. Uh, we we are in early days there, but uh, it's, it's definitely a program that's uh, in place. Thank you. Um, another question here is, what if there are network elements that are not met metadata aware? Right, and this is a, a very uh, common question. Um, MediaNet fundamentally as an architecture from the get-go has been designed to not require one to kind of do a forklift upgrade. So what I mean by that is not every element or not every endpoint needs to be MediaNet enabled for one to recognize them. Specifically on the topic of metadata, if there is a network node uh, that doesn't uh, understand metadata, it will just pass it through. There is no uh, there is no harm done, but it still leaves a lot of value on the for for um, metadata enabled elements for a network management service to be able to talk to these metadata enabled elements and uh, you know enhance reporting uh, as well as uh, troubleshooting. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, I think we have uh, time for one more question here. Um, Let's see. But folks, please, please send those questions in. Um, does an NMS need to integrate with the MSI to be able to leverage MediaNet? Um, no. So um, as I pointed out earlier in the presentation, what the MSI enables is a risk-based management interface. So it's standard risk. Uh, it's a standard risk-based set of uh, APIs. So the MS a management service or an application controller does not necessarily need to pick the MSI up and integrate with it. Uh, it can simply query these REST-based APIs and be able to authenticate itself to endpoints that have the MSI integrated and, and deliver a lot of uh, deliver on, on all these media net capabilities that we've been talking about. Great. Thanks, thanks, thanks very much, Hassan. And uh, you know, I just want to let the audience know that Action Pack is, is really proud to have um, earned the MSI IBT recently, and um, so we're looking forward uh, and very proud of that that certificate. So, um, just want to let the folks know that. And also, if uh, folks are interested in downloading a a free version of uh, Live Action please visit uh, www.actionpacks.com slash live action download. Or if you'd like to um, learn a little bit more about uh, live action, just please contact Steve Adams and or Keith Parsons, which their contact numbers are available here. So um, I want to thank everyone for joining us here today. Vasant, thank you again for taking time out to present and provide this information to everyone. And we appreciate your time. So thank you again, everyone. Have a great action-packed day. And we will see you uh, next month. Thank you very much.